Um, thank you all for coming to our very last lecture series of this academic year. Um, well, we still have one event left, uh, which is this Friday coming up, the Jipong Circle Talk, which is engagement with North Korea. But today I'm glad that uh, our topic today is on South Korea, not North Korea. <laughs> We've been doing so many events on North Korea, and I think it's really <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, let me introduce um, our speaker today. Uh, we're very delighted to have him here. Um, he's Professor Taekyung Kim is Associate Professor of International Development and former Associate Dean for International Affairs of the Graduate School of International Studies at Seoul National University. And uh, his main academic, he's also currently a visiting fellow at the Woodrow Wilson Center. And uh, his main academic research areas include international development, global governance, and international political sociology. He co-edited the book titled The Korean State and Social Policy, published by Oxford University Press in 2011. And uh, let me just briefly uh, mention uh, about his past experiences. For many years, he served as a Secretary General of the Korean Association of International Studies and the Korea Association for International Development and Cooperation, and is a board member of International Political Science Association. And in the public sector, he currently serves as a public policy advisor for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and also worked for the UNESCO Bangkok office, UNDP Seoul Policy Center, ILO, and UN Office for Sub Sustainable Development. In the civic sector, he is the chairperson of um, of International Affairs at the Citizens Coalition for Economic Justice and advisory member of ODA Watch in Korea. So as you can see, he's really like across all over like public, academic, civic uh, uh, spheres. Um, so those of you, especially students, if you're interested in this area, I think this is a great opportunity to ask him uh, questions on uh, issues related to uh, development. Without further ado, I'll ask Professor Kim for his presentation today. Oh, oh, thank you. Uh, very kind introduction. Um, okay, it's not the. Can I be, uh, this? You can just have it there. Okay. Yep. It's still moving. <laughs> Okay. All right, the, uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Taeyun Kim. Uh, as introduced by the Professor Kim, uh, I'm you know, doing the research on the international development, especially 48, so-called ODA, the Official Development Assistance. I especially focusing on South Korea and other countries in East Asia, such as the Japan and China. So today, I'm going to talk about the South Korea, especially how to reform the South Korea, the ODA policy. Uh, because we have the crisis of last year, I mean, back in 2016, the Chaejun you know, scandal, political scandal, and we changed the uh, our the president, uh, I mean, government from the you know, a former the you know, the Labour Party to the current Minjae government. So there's a lot of things that now is going on for change and reform. So how we can evaluate the reform to action and the direction for the roadmap of South Korean policies, especially the foreign aid. And then I'm going to compare the South Korean case with the China and Japan. So it's kind of a little bit comparative analysis. How different uh, patterns of uh, ODA policies, I mean, in general, the aid policies in China, Japan, and Korea. And then finally, I'm going to bring back kind of Nordic, I mean, Scandinavian countries, the policies for the foreign aid. It could be our the future roadmap to reform uh, following some of the humanitarian uh, assistance. Uh, oriented policy for South Korea. So let me start. So the title is like this. And actually, this is the first, I think, round for presenting my papers. It's very preliminary. So it is, you can't give any uh, input or comments. I think all the comments are quite the more welcome. So this is the first round. And then the, on Thursday, this week, I'm going to present the same thing to the uh, University of Wisconsin Medicine. And then in May, the UPenn and then the size John Hopkins University. So the, I'm going to collect all the comments from the flow, and then I'm going to revise the paper, and then the probably I'm going to publish the, this article. Okay, so the thing is, I mean, the outline of today's talk, I'm going to a uh, little bit the explain some what kind of motivation I have to tackle this issue. And then I'm going to move on to some the very short, brief, I think, the summary of South Korea and the ODA policies. It's a historical analysis. 
uh, so the evolutionary, I think, the uh, path for the South Korea, the development policies, and the what kind of current you know, issues we have, so the how we can tackle and handle with them. And then we're going to move on some of the Asian trap. That's my, the, my personal you know, jargon, the Asian trap. The, all the, you know, the three major Asian countries, such as South Korea, China, Japan, they all now the following the trap. That's the Asian trap. What is that? It, that's kind of ghost or legacies of developmental state. So they so, I mean, focus on the fast track catch up policy. And then the, a lot of the money is now pouring into the uh, loan rather than grant. So the, I think that those problems is, could be the catchword of the Asian model, or you can say, or you can criticize, that model is kind of trap, so-called Asian trap. So I will talk about the competition between the Japan, China, mainly, and then I'm going to add up some the Korean perspective for the competition by using foreign aid, especially in Africa. And then the, how we can the, overcome some of the Asian trap. That's the last part, the modernizing Korea's development policy. So two main issues I'm going to uh, throw out to the floor. That's the first one, the escape, how to escape from the developmentalism. Second is we can just follow some of the uh, traditional track of Asian, I mean, Nordic donor, you know, the experiences. And then I'm going to close my talk and then I'm going to get some of the feedback from you, your idea. Okay, motivation. Let me start at the bottom. The, the CGD, the Center for Global Development, that's the main, I think, the very important and the very famous the, uh, think tank in Washington DC, especially specializing the uh, ODA and the foreign aid in general. They just they publish the, every year, uh, there is the commitment to develop index. So if you see the index last year, if you see the button, they collected the data from 27 different countries, all the, the uh, members of OECD. At the bottom, Japan, 26. In South Korea, 27. So in the worst case, so East Asian the, uh, donor countries, they are now ranked 26, 27 among 27 countries. How to back to my PPT? <laughs> okay, here. So two East Asian dark donors, uh, do you know the DAG, right? OECD DAG, the, the Developers this Committee, that's the one of the subcommittee of the OECD. It's kind of inner group, I mean, the Advanced Donor uh, Club. Uh, South Korea joined in 2010, and uh, of course, Japan, the one of the founding members of OECD DAG. So, two, I think, the Asian donors, now very worst case for the OECD DAG. So, how we can evaluate, how we can the approach, how we can the, uh, interpret those two countries, the performances? It's good for recipient countries or good for, I mean, donor countries. So the, that's why I'm going to throw the, some questions, research questions. First one, why does South Korea fail to get out of the developmental Asian way, especially the loan-centered and the tightly aid-centered and then bilateral aid-centered? It's the worst kind of combination. So tight something, tied to something for the donor interest. And then they through the not through the multilateral international organization, but through the bilateral kind of very intimate the, uh, contact to the, the recipient countries, and also the loan based. Uh, so the, I will talk about the what is the Asian trap and how we can overcome, and the, how we can the distinguish South Korean model from the China and the Japan model. So that's the key of the motivation for this research. Okay, so some warming up. I think the, everyone knows the, some of the uh, jargon, the terminology about the international aid or the uh, development studies. So let me, let me briefly mention some of uh, the key concepts. The first ODA. So the Office of Development Assistance, according to the OECD. According to OECD definition, there are three components. First one, development related project. So the, it's not related to the military. It's not related to some the non-development projects. It should be the, uh, related to development, right? Poverty reduction, education, healthcare, and so on. And the second component is from country to country, from government to government. So not from private sector to government. That's not the ODA. You cannot calculate that kind of transition as ODA. And the last one, very important, at least 25% of ODA should be, should be grant, not loan. Even though you designed the loan-based project, uh, among those demands for the loan project, 
25% of that uh, ODA should be dropped. So those three elements is kind of definition of the uh, ODA according to the doc. Uh, even though there's some country now they try to revise the ODA uh, the definition, such as Japan, Germany, uh, France. Why? I'll, I'll talk about it later. Why they try to revise the, the ODA definition. And the second, the types of ODA. The first one, they consider loans versus grants. So grants is simply saying the free money without the conditions. So the recipient country cannot, I mean, must not repay. Just receive and the user. And concession loan, I mean, the interest rate is quite the lower than the market ratio. But in the long term, they have to pay back with the interest. So it's quite different patterns of the ODA. And the second is tied and untied. So tied to what? Tied to interest of donor countries. For example, Samsung can do something like the PPP to construct that for Cambodia, for example. So the South Korean government just use, use the Korean companies as an you know, implementator. And then they tied it to you know, Korean materials, Korean workers. So all things are connected to the Korean things. But the, as the, uh, you know, the role, kind of the principle of the uh, uh, aid policies, according to West Dog and the United Nations, it should be it should be related to local government, local workers, local materials, local institutions. That's the way why we have to provide foreign aid to assist the respiring countries. But tied aid to uh, South Korean like companies, workers, and I mean the manpower or the other things, and untied. That's quite different patterns. And finally, bilateral versus multilateral. I think that you can you can the, uh, imagine what kind of difference between two. So. Uh, I mean, on the right side, grants based and the untied and the multilateral, that's kind of principle of international aid community. But the all Asian you know, donors now is backward. They all focus on the concessional loans and tied aid and bilateral aid. All right, and then the aid incentives. Why the um, donor country provide aid? Why? What kind of the incentive they have? So first factor, it, it depends on the scholars, but the, uh, by and large, we can divide three different patterns for the AD centers. First one is security oriented. So the key example is US, so-called democracy. So providing aid like for the democratization of third world countries. And then the UK. And the second pattern, commercialized aid. So a very famous case, Japan. Japan, if you look at the ODA charter of Japanese government, they clearly is, uh, you know, the uh, write down what kind of incentive we try to use for, I mean, the aid. So I would uh, try to de explain that uh, later. And Germany, France nowadays join this kind of category. And the final humanitarian aid. So the you can just very easily deselect what kind of countries uh, among the OECD member, members uh, for the case of humanitarian. I think the Nordic countries: Sweden, Denmark, Finland, and Norway. But the Finland now, they now they try to reform by the adopting some of the marketization or new rural ideology. So they're now a little bit different track. But the, in general, Norway and uh, Sweden, there's a top model for the humanitarian aid. Okay, now move on to uh, South Korea. So a lot of uh, stuff I have to explain, but uh, let me briefly explain the, what kind of uh, the historical, I think, the events uh, we have to memorize uh, when it comes to the birth of the Korea aid. So first one, the um, you know, South Korean government always like, uh, you know, advertise South Korean the, uh, model. It's the first case in the world, successfully transforming itself from recipient to donor. But I think this is kind of a little bit exaggerated. I mean, Japan is the first case. Japan, and after the Second World War, they received a lot of the, uh, aid from the U.S. and the United Nations, and then they just very shortly they joined the, uh, you know, kind of donor club back in 1951. That's the, uh, you know, plan. So they just started again to provide the aid. So I think the Japan is the first case, but probably South Korea is the second case. Anyway, important thing is that South Korea very successfully changed their status from the recipient to a donor in a very condensed way. And then the second thing is the EDCF, the Economic Development Cooperation Fund, is kind of the uh, self-fund of uh, Korean Exim Bank. Um, it is still uh, established in the 19, back in 1987, 
and Koi Kai in 1991, and then we uh, joined the Wolsey Club, I mean Donors Club, back in 2010. Um, and then I will talk about some problematic the uh, aspect of South Korean current structure of uh, aid, you know, from the aid design through the I think implementation and to uh, evaluation. So if you look at the, this chart, uh, you can can you recognize? So this one on the left side, Ministry of the Strategies and Finance, and on the right side, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So as I explained, the, uh, we have two different types of ODA. That's grant versus the loan, right? So on the left side, the Ministry of Strategic Finance, they in charge of whole loan project in South Korea as the digital maker. And then under the, the ministry, the Korean Action Bank here as the implementator. So all the loan project implemented by Action Bank by using the EDCL. And on the right side, Minister for MOFA is in charge of the grant-based all project. And the implementator for the uh, grant uh, project is Koita, Korean, the, what is that? International Cooperation Agency. But now, they all, I mean, two of the giants of uh, the ministry, they, they keep fighting each other. It's kind of the uh, disaster. So it's kind of struggle of bureaucracies or bureaucratic power inside the South Korean government. And then there's like, uh, I didn't explain yet, but the, uh, I mean, 40% of all the OD in South Korea, that's the law. And 60% that's grant. So, um, and then the implementator, basically we have two, right? The uh, Action Bank and the Koika. And then we have the another day uh, implementator, all ministries, education, labor, and you know the social affairs. So the 36 different ministries or the government-sponsored institution now involved in the providing aid. So totally fragmented. So the back to the here, the third point: Why the South Korean government, I think the Im Young Bak government, decided to launch Committee on Internet Development Cooperation? It's kind of part of the uh, office of uh, Prime Minister to control fragmentation. So it's kind of higher uh, kind of umbrella organized agency to control Ministry of the Finance and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because they all the time fighting each other. All right, so that's the one of the biggest problems that we are now facing in South Korea. The, uh, you know the ODA policies. I think the, the more fundamental problem we don't have any philosophical background. The big question: Why South, South Korea need provide aid? For what? We have a lot of problems in the domestic, right? Poverty and welfare. But why we have to allocate some part of the, our deposit for ODA? So the, as I told you, um, in the North country, they have a clear mindset. Why we have to provide aid? Because the humanitarian activities, right? For the reduction, the human rights, and democracy. And the US has, and Japan has, but South Korea, no. We don't, unfortunately, we don't have it yet. So we have to think about why we have to provide foreign aid. So the, some ministry, especially the Ministry of uh, Finance and Strategic Finance, they highlight the, uh, we are kind of very important, the example of the uh, development of state. So that's why we have to put a lot of money for loan project to support recipient countries. Because recipient countries have some, their own the national plan to develop economic growth. So we have to be support, we have to give some knowledge, uh, knowledge shared program. And then on the other hand, the uh, MOFA, the Foreign Affairs, they talk about, no, we have to provide some humanitarian assistance, right? Without conditions. So it is a big fight and big different, I think, the approach to the ODA. So there's no any common ground to talk about what is South Korean aid. So, if you look at the second point, government top-down strategy, that's the one, I think, the, one of the characteristics of the Korean uh, development state. So top-down, South Korean government, the BA, uh, Blue House, designs some kind of keyword, right? So Im Young under the Im Young administration, green growth, that's kind of buzzword, right? So the, we just allocate the huge budget for green growth, like growth plus green. Can you imagine this? It's quite a different thing, right? So the environmental issues and climate change, and also on the other hand, the you know economic growth, 
but the Immobile government tried to combine green growth into the name of green growth. And then the uh, Park Geun-hye regime uh, talked about, of course, the Semar movement, Semar Undong, just like following the uh, father's legacies. So I'm not going to criticize Semar Undong, but we have the same patterns of kind of ODA program to support the agricultural reform in Western countries. But all of a sudden, Park Geun-hye regime changed the name of program from the agricultural something to uh, Semar movement. So that's the problem. All right, and then the, uh, I just said, you know, consistent loan now is 40 percent, very high ratio. Uh, if you compare it to the other OECD members, I will show you later. And then low ratio of the multilateral and high ratio of the tight aid. It's the biggest problem. So throughout the PPP or the other blended, you know, the uh, patent for the financing, they invite the companies, Samsung or the all the in the table and the, the uh, you know, the SMEs into the ODA market. So the selling South Korean goods through the ODA. So that's the another, I think, a very bad kind of aspect or influence South Korea the, uh, I mean, the ODA. Right, and finally, I tried to explain this something very uh, severe kind of problem. That's pragmatic structure, uh, planning, and implementation. Okay, this is the uh, very short the comparison between Japan and South Korea, especially the ratio of grant versus loan. If you look at the left side, the Japanese case, Japanese uh, allocate the loan kind of 60%, and the grant 40%. South Korea is a little bit better, right? So 40% for uh, grant and 6% for uh, loan. But if you look at this, sorry, I mean, here, this is the whole, all the down member countries. All right, this is the kind of outliers. If you look at majority, so the Nordic countries and the UK and US, so almost 100% allocated for grant. Or on average, like the more than the 90%, they usually use uh, ODA for the purpose of the grant rather than you know, loan. But if you look at on the right side, Germany and France, South Korea, France, Japan, Portugal, the exceptional cases. So the major, I mean, Asian donors in South Korea and the Japan, I think the Japanese is number one, especially in terms of the, uh, the loan-based project. So 60% is like the top ratio in a, uh, among the OECD member countries. Okay, back to Korea. So now you can see some kind of reason why we have to modernize, why we have to reform the Korean model of ODA policies. Uh, I mean, the fundamentally speaking, we don't have clear set of philosophical background. Why? we have to provide. So that's, I think, the first the step. Uh, when you talk about the reform of action, we have to design. And then the second one is the, um, uh, what kind of framing power, what kind of framework we can the, uh, invite, I mean, borrow from the, some of the previous patterns of the ODA uh, you know, donor, especially uh, among the OECD member countries. So if you take the uh, loan-centered commercialized you know, pattern for ODA models, so, uh, such as Japan, that's kind of flying this model. So a lot of critics we can see. So um, just Japan is flying and the reasons follow. So if you, a uh, simple example why we, uh, we have to talk about flying this model. So Japanese, the ODA agency, uh, the name is JICA. South Korea is Koika. So South Korea just, just use the same name, right? <laughs> By change, the Korea, Japan. And then the, why not, I mean, we can follow the first pattern and then maybe the second pattern, the humanitarian, the uh, new the model. So by the, um, I mean, weighing more, uh, put, uh, putting more, more weight on the, some humanitarian side. So the, by the minimizing the loan and the maximizing the grants. So that could be the second, you know, uh, the option for South Korea. And finally, security center, U.S. model. Because we have North Korea, and then the, we can de-strategize aid, uh, especially how to socialize North Korea by using the foreign aid. So it could be uh, our option. So, uh, but uh, as I said, uh, there's no any serious kind of debate or discussion what could be our own the philosophical background or the principle for South Korean model. So uh, I will be, uh, emphasize the second model, it, it is, I think, more desirable for South Korea. 
why I will talk about the reasons uh, why do we have to choose the second one, the North model, as the uh, South Korean like roadmap for the informative actions. And then the another need for the modernizing, that's the back in 2016, everyone knows the Chaesun crisis, I mean political scandal. So Chaesun Chil still try to use this one, this photo. I tried to use the, the ODA for her own purpose. So Myanmar in Africa, this is the African case. Um, the Park Geun-hye here, right? The former the president, and then on the right side from her, the uh, head of Koika. So he is now explaining why the uh, Korean aid is quite important in Africa. So, but uh, Choi Shun Shi basically designed Korean the town and Korean tower in Myanmar by using Semar Undong money. But why they need Korean town? Why they need Korean tower? So it's kind of political gesture and for uh, her own gains. So if you see the middle foundation, that's the privatized by Chaesun Chil, and middle foundation designed the uh, ODA, especially 2016 and 2017. So it is kind of the political scandal and the biggest problem because we are uh, totally fragmented, right, by the two ministries and they implemented by 36 different agencies. So there's no any control tower at all. Even though, as I said here, on the top, we have the, um, here, account for the International Development Corporation, that's the Prime Minister office, but there's no any power at all. It's kind of the paper uh, you know, agency to uh, sign up. Uh, from the, all the proposal, I mean, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of uh, Strategic Finance. So that's why the, there are the, the big loophole uh, in which any personal, powerful person should intervene into the uh, Korean, I mean, ODA, I mean, the text-based ODA. Okay, so what kind of inventions, what kind of intervention by government for uh, reform I think the first one, the, uh, as soon as possible, we have to borrow the philosophy by philosophy principles. So what kind of principles, what kind of, what kind of philosophy we can the, develop, I don't know yet. But the, uh, personally, I just the, highlight the importance of the humanitarian assistance. It could be, I think, the uh, best option for South Korean political background. And the second one is the um, reduce the ratio of the loan project and tight aid and bilateral aid. Try to meet international standards. So the, uh, of course, the behind the scene, still, I mean, new government tried to reform, but ministry, two ministries to fight, still. Very hard to fight, it's a blood, blood war, I mean, between two ministries. Uh, and the third one is, uh, as I said, you know, fragmented ODA structure should be uh, integrated. Um, uh, I mean, two ministries, Exxon Bank and Koika, and Minister of Strategic Finance and Minister of Foreign Affairs, it's the exactly the same structure of Japan back in 1990s and 2000. But 2008, Japan was integrated. I mean, the JICA and then the Japanese Action Bank into one single new JICA. Why? A lot of problem at all. I mean, they from the fragmentation. I mean, they from the decision making procedure to uh, implementation. So it's a high time for South Korea to integrate. I don't know what kind of procedure we have to take, but that's the common kind of goal for uh, political intervention. Uh, uh, we needed to design. And then next one is, the, is that the um, North Korea. So how we can discipline North Korea through the ODA. So the officially, we cannot be, I mean, send, deliver ODA to North Korea directly. Because according to our constitution, North Korea is part of South Korea. Mm -hmm. So just remember the, uh, the definition of ODA. It should be transferred from country to country. But North Korea, according to the Constitution, is part of the Korean Peninsula, part of the territory of South Korea. So we cannot officially deliver South Korean ODA to North Korea directly. But we can deliver. How? Through the multilateral organization. So trust fund, we can design some trust fund. We can use the U, uh, uh, UNDP or the UNICEF, some of the UN agencies. So, uh, if you, I mean, the policy uh, maker in the Blue House, if they have some intention uh, and enthusiasm, 
Islam to uh, support uh, North Korea through the South Korea ODA, they can do. And then finally, I will talk about very later of my presentation, how to make the Korean aid as 